Hello and welcome back to the PES 2020 Master League with AS Roma and incredibly we have actually made it through a whole season. Absolutely staggering considering my past track record. I'm, I'm delighted with myself, I, I absolutely am. As you can see from the calendar we only have one Serie A game left and it's at home to Hellas Verona and then the, the testimonial for all the retiring players. So this episode we're going to play those two games and we're going to have a look around the the leagues, see who's done what, look at the top scorers list and generally just do a bit of a roundup of this opening season and hopefully we will finish second in the league which is where we sit currently a point ahead of Inter Milan and we will show you how we've uh, got into second in the league with this recap that we're going to play as we always do and of course there's, uh, there's more games in this one than usual, I think there's four. So the first game was against Udinese away. We played our strong. Did we play this? No, we we made many changes. It would seem. I don't remember doing that many changes, but we've changed the whole squad around. Uh, we had the first chance of the game with Zaniolo with a strike just wide of the post. And Udinese with uh, Rodrigo de Paul. Is it Rodrigo de Paul? Raul de Paul? I can't remember. Plays it into Kevin Desa Kevin Lasagna with a absolutely delicious finish into the back of the net past Marante. So we were a goal down in the early going. Barbosa, I was 50p head himself, and nods, uh, nods a header over the top of the crossbar. But we did draw level through Henrik Mkhitaryan. His head is perfectly like a, a pound coin or a 10p. Not a 50p at all, I don't know. As he nods into the back of the net to equalise in the 23rd minute as our, as our uh, attempts to finish second in the league that does no harm whatsoever we did there's something coming up here Fofana that's what it is <laughs> Seiko Fofana with a shot and he's put it wide I, sorry I couldn't remember I had made this recap a couple of days ago and I can't remember what happened but I'll tell you what happens here Justin Cliver is in one-on-one -on -one and he finally scores a one-on-one -on -one. another yeah another late goal in the league but Justin Cliver has fight he's back in the side after injury and he's finally remembered how to score a one-on-one. -on -one. Absolutely staggering stuff. And there was a though this is an absolutely ridiculous save. This is possibly save of the season for Morante. The header from Lasagna, it's creeping right in the bottom corner. Morante gets it, there we go. Just off the line. It clips the inside of the post, comes back out and hits his top hand and goes out for a corner that is a spectacular save from our backup goalkeeper and we do get the win although the uh, the scenes afterwards it's everyone's looking really upset because uh, it mathematically meant that we couldn't win the league which we have known for ages so this was kind of pointless but you know uh, we'll take a 2-1 win the, the league title after about maybe 20 23 games we we're like well there's no chance we're winning the league so we might as well shoot for as high up the table as we can which is, oh, this is why we rested everyone, because we had a game against AC Milan. And, and Jesus, Paul Lopez, he heard me say that Morante made the save of the season, and he's uh, tried to outdo him with that absolutely spectacular effort. Dzeko holds the ball up superbly, plays in Diego Perotti, and it's uh, denied by Donnarumma. Perotti, of course, who will be leaving at the end of the season, he's going to Torino. The ball in across and off the top of the crossbar from Piontek. A whole, not a whole lot happened in this game until Alessandro Florenzi with an absolute pearler of a free kick. Donnarumma didn't even move because he thought, what is the point? I'll just look like an idiot. Uh, and Florenzi, who has been one of our standout players this season, he doesn't get a lot of praise because in, the, in these highlights because as a defender. But he's been absolutely solid. Uh, just a shot from behind the goal of that free kick. Lovely, lovely stuff from, from our captain, who is going absolutely nowhere, despite the bids that we've got for him. Dzeko plays through Zaniolo in the 88th minute, the chance to seal the game, dinks Donnarumma, and puts it wide. <laughs> Story of our season, that, with one-on-ones. And that was the final score in this game, a 1-0 victory at home to AC Milan, which is always good. We shan't say, we shan't scoff at that. There is the boy, Florenzi, who got us our goal in the 75th minute with a stunning free kick as we went into this game away against Lecce, bottom of the table Lecce, who I think have barely scraped double digits in regards to points. So we were looking to make a statement and Mkhitaryan went through immediately and he's hit the post in the, in the fourth minute. We started as we meant, meant to go on in this one as Russo got a start Russo gets the shot and Russo gets the goal. 
gets his, uh, his first, is that his first Serie A goal? I can't quite remember, but he's got it and he's absolutely bloody delighted. And he's played in again, up against Del Orco. Good strength shown, I kept this clip in because it's good strength shown by Russo. Gets the shot away, maybe should have squared it. And Mkhitaryan plays in Antonucci and it's another save. By the way, Lecce had apps. this is not me being biased, Lecce had absolutely bugger all highlights in this game. Pellegrini to Antonucci who knocks it past his man terrifically, even though he's absolutely bollocks, he's able to stride into the area and he sweats it across to Russo who finishes. Really unselfish play from Mirko Antonucci to give the young lad, uh, young Russo his second goal of the game. And his second goal, possibly second or third, I can't remember how many goals he scored in Serie A. I know he scored one in Europe in the Europa League, but I can't remember how many goals he got in the league, which is uh, not very good management for me. But another win, three wins on the spin at the start of this little recap, which is never a bad thing. We will happily take it as uh, Mbula looks uh, incredulous. There's the word of the day. And we go into the final game of this recap up against Spal at home. Uh, Patan Andrea Patania in the 50th minute. That's how little happened in this game was so bad. It was so bad. Cliver plays the ball in towards Ed and Dzeko, however. Dzeko rounds his man. <laughs> he doesn't want to round anybody. He just drops the shoulder. It's a different type of goal from Ed and Dzeko, but the result remains the same. The man is an absolute hero, and if we could sign him to a lifelong contract, we absolutely bloody would. Spinazzola played in Pellegrini, shot into the side netting. And to be honest, I think that is pretty much, yeah, that's pretty much all that happened in this game. It was bloody terrible. And uh, a one-all draw at home to Spal, not the ideal result, considering uh, that we should have won this game considerably easier than we did. However, it does leave us in second in the table, a point ahead of Inter and Lazio. So before we get into our final game of the season, we have a few negotiations to go through. Uh, Mancini has been offered, ooh, 19 and a half million from Crystal Palace. Now, to be honest, right, one of the areas I'm looking to strengthen in the summer transfer window is to get a top quality centre back into partner Regani. I mean, Mancini's been absolutely terrific, but I feel like it's somewhere that we could improve, but I don't really want to sell him at this stage of the game. So we'll reject that. Uh, Javier Pastore. Now, Pastore is another one of those lads I'm thinking about moving on, truth be told. Because I have an idea for someone to come. Plus, Zaniolo was pretty much nailed down that starting spot at attacking midfield. But I do have someone in mind to come in and replace Pastore should we let him go. It is to Napoli, though, who are a rival. So if they are going to try and get him, we're going to renegotiate to get the best deal we can for ourselves. His release fee is 15 million, I think his market value was, was it 13? Yes, 13. So, 13 is what you're going to have to pay lads, 13.4, yeah, he's not going on the cheap. So here we go lads, it is the final game of the league season. We go up against Hellas Verona at home. We have gone with our usual lineup. The only difference is uh, Veritu. Veritu comes in for Pellegrini, whose form was, was down a bit, so we've brought Veritu in for this game up against Hellas Verona, who have, who have they got? Radun Radunovic in goal. That's definitely how you pronounce that. Gunter Dav. Oh, God. Um, him. Uh, Bocchetti, Vera, Amrabat, Di Gaudio. Lazvich, Pesina, Bessa, and Tutino. Gennaro Tutino. I have him in my Swansea Football Manager save. Well, there you go. See if he scores against me. We'll be bloody furious. For the final time this season, we step out onto the Stadio Olimpico pitch in front of a packed house. And rightfully so. The, the fans have come to, uh, to see us finish second in the league table. So that is what we are going to give them. Cut out by Cristante. Dzeko. Looks for the run of Cliver. He's done well, Cliver. Veritu. I have a shot, why not? Veritu has gone very close to giving us the lead. Florenzi to deliver the resulting corner. It's not the, not the worst, it's over everyone's head though. Cristante is gonna pick it up. We're gonna re try and reset here and there. There's it off for Zaniolo, who's going to strike it this time. It's deflected. What a save that is by the keeper. 
and it's been cleared away. We still have it though. Spinazzola, Zaniolo, Clivert. Finds Zaniolo on the edge of the area. He's going to try it again. And he's been denied again by Radunovic. Dzeko picks that up. Zaniolo plays it through for Under. Lovely play. It's Cengiz Under. He's gone for the chip and he scored. <laughs> well, I have absolutely no idea how that's gone in. But Cengiz Under. Oh, God. They're doing the bloody mic. Well, there you go. Dzeko, you've switched bands, you absolute fiend. There you go. He was the front man of his own band and now he's been reduced to a side character. I don't know what I'm saying. I did not expect that to go in is what I'm trying to get at. Cheng is in there. I thought the keeper was going to come out and I was going to try and dink it over the top of him. But either way, don't really care. It's ended up in the net. I'm happy enough. Looks to deliver it in towards Jekko. There's the header. It's in the back of the net. But Jekko is, all, he is offside. There's a chance for Verona. Tutino's in behind here. He's got away. It's Tutino! And he's put it wide. What a chance that is. That's their first real chance of the game. And we've been absolutely caught napping there. Another corner to be delivered by Florenzi. Can we make something out of any of these? Not this one. There it's out. Oh, it comes through to Unde! I don't know what's happened with my voice there. It's a thing that's happened and I feel that we should just forget about it and move on. And celebrate the fact that Ching is in there has his second goal of the game. Deep into the four minutes of added time. Going to get a 2-0 win on the final day of the season to cement our place in second in the league. Not a bad result, I reckon, considering. And there it is. The season has been completed. We finish second in the league. Which, to be honest, I'll take. You know, I'll have, second, com it comes right after first. So, there we go. Yes, lads. Applaud those fans who have travelled far and near to support you all season. And hopefully, next season, we can uh, deliver them some silverware. There it is, the final league table for the season. Juventus win the league by 15 points. That's taking the piss, that is. We finish in second with 80 points. Inter Milan in third and Lazio in fourth. I think it's on goal difference, is it? Yeah, oh, by a single goal. Well, there you go. I don't know, maybe it's head-to-head -head in Serie A. I can't remember. Either way, Inter finish third. Lazio in fourth. Napoli finish in fifth. And Fiorentina round out the top six. However, it is heartbreak for Lecce, Brescia and Verona. We've actually relegated them on the last day of the season. Bologna have survived as we have beaten Verona to send them down and Bologna have survived. Well, there you go. Sorry, Verona. I, 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 didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know. The Serie A team of the season has also been released. We have three players in it. Are you taking the piss? Ed and Dzeko isn't in the team of the season. This is balls. This has been absolutely robbed. So who else is in it? Handanovic, San Alexandro, Chiellini, Koulibaly, Florenzi comes in at right back, Ramsey, Pjanic, Cristante, Sergei Milinkovic, Savic, Cristiano Ronaldo, and Cengiz Under, really? Well, there you go. I mean, he was good, but Jed and Dzeko was the absolute boy for us this season, so I have uh, issues with that. We also have an update for the Pastore transfer. They're going to offer us 12.6 million for Javier Pastore. I don't really want to sell to a rival, truth be told, but he's got a 5.9 average rating. He's only got three goals and five assists this season. That's not good at all. Uh, he's 31 as well, so this may well be, you know what, this seems like a good, the more I look at it and the more I think about it, the, uh, the more sense this makes. So, Javier Pastore, thank you for your service, but you also are on your way. God, this is a clear item I'm doing now, Jesus. So there we are, that is three players definitely leaving at the start of next season. Uh, Juan Jesus to West Ham, Diego Perotti to Torino, and now Javier Pastore is going to Napoli. But who will be joining us in Serie A next season? Of course, we've seen the three relegated sides in uh, was it Lecce, Brescia, and Hellas Verona. Who is coming up? Empoli, Perugia, and Chievo are coming up. 
Looking at the Coppa Italia, Inter Milan went all the way to the final. They, of course, knocked us out and they lost 1-0 to Napoli. So Napoli win this year's Coppa Italia. So while we're here, we're just going to do a quick roundup of the rest of the leagues uh, around Europe and some, abroad, some further afield just to see what has happened. Manchester City win the Premier League with Tottenham in second, Liverpool third, Arsenal fourth. Newcastle survived, happy days. Uh, who has gone down? Sheffield United bottom, Aston Villa and Burnley are all going down. In the Championship, Leeds and Blackburn are automatically promoted and Fulham will be joining them. So Leeds, Blackburn and Fulham go up to the Premier League. Who would have been relegated? Charlton, Luton and Wigan. Well, there you go. There's some hope for Manchester United fans. They did win the FA Cup, taking down Leicester in the final. We've hopped on the Eurostar and landed in France. Uh, what is the point? Why do we even look at this league? PSG, of course, win it by an absolute country mile. Uh, with Lille in second, Lyon third and Montpellier in fourth. Well, there you go. Who is going down to Ligue de Stade Brestois? and Metz are both going down and in Ligue 2, Auxerre and Gangomp will be moving up into France's top league. Into the Eredivisie and PSV win it ahead of Ajax by quite a significant distance actually. Feyenoord in third and Utrecht in fourth. Ligue Nos in Portugal, Porto take the title with Benfica quite a ways off in second, Braga in third and Sporting Lisbon in fourth. Moving over to Spain and La Liga, Barcelona win the league title by 11 points, 100 points for Barcelona as they take the league title ahead of Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid on the same points as their Madrid rivals. But it's, uh, is it goal difference? Yep, goal difference has robbed them of second place and Real Betis finishing fourth. Who is relegated? Mallorca, Valladolid and Alaves. Into the second tier of Spanish football and it's Girona, Huesca and Deportivo La Coruña coming up into La Liga. So that's all the main leagues to have a look at and of course there are many many more leagues to, that we could have a look at but uh, those are the ones that everyone really kind of generally wants to look at. If you want to know any other leagues, uh, the results, the league table of any of those, let me know in the comment section below and we'll have a look at those. But until then we're going to have a look through the European competitions and see who did end up winning the Europa League the knockout phase it was Inter Milan well there you go Inter Milan took down Arsenal Arsenal knocked us out of course in the quarterfinals and they faced Inter and Inter Milan take down Arsenal in the final what were the uh, it was Napoli were knocked out by Arsenal and Inter Milan knocked out Manchester United that must have been sweet for Romelu Lukaku now we move on into the big one the big European competition which we will be playing in next season the Champions League uh, I haven't even looked at this all season so I had no idea who is in it or where they got to. We'll have a look at the quarterfinals. It was Bar it was an El Clasico quarterfinal as Barcelona took down Real Madrid. Celtic knocked Valencia in the quarterfinals. Well, there you go. Ajax knocked out Bayern Munich convincingly and PSG knocked out Dinamo Zagreb in the quarterfinals. You know, the semis, Ajax took Celtic out and PSG knocked out Barcelona. So it's an Ajax-PSG final. Will PSG finally get that Champions League? No, they don't. Ajax. Ajax have won the Champions League by a goal to nil. Ajax. God, it's kind of funny, though, that PSG are never going to win a Champions League. It's, it's pretty hilarious. Well done, Ajax. Bloody well done. Well, this is throwing a proverbial spanner into the works. Um, the European champions Ajax have come to us and offered us the job at the Amsterdam Arena. No, 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 this is thrown this is quite the conundrum to use a, a word which is far too big for my vocabulary. Now then, Ajax, European champions. Now keep in mind I wanna I've loved my time at Roma and I wanna build this team to be a European powerhouse and to win to finally win that Scudetto. But 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 Ajax are and plus we'll be in Europe next season as well. But Ajax are the reigning European champions and they've come to us to offer us the job. Plus we'll be playing in a considerably weaker league. So we have a chance of winning a league title as well. Oh, this is difficult. For the first time I'm actually considering I'm, I'm considering changing teams in one of these master leagues. But it's, I'm not going to leave it up to me because uh, I, as any, uh, any of my uh, former partners will tell you, I have a huge fear of commitment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it in the hands of you lovely fine people. 
to decide our fate. There will be a poll in the top right of this video with either Roma or Ajax and you will decide whether we stay or whether we go. We only have until the end of the season so we'll have to make it kind of snappy. But yeah, Ajax or Roma, it's entirely up to you. But whilst that's all going on, we do have our end of season review. We may have started the season off poorly, but we bounced back. Well done for achieving the new goal so we set for ourselves. Thank you, my my baldy friend. Downward Spiral from the get-go made it a bit harder to bounce back. What do you mean Downward Spiral? We drew our first game. So this is it. The final, final, final game of this season is the testimonial game for uh, the lads that are retiring. We have play, we're playing a completely rotated lineup. Why not? We're going to play some of the lads that will be leaving us. So Juan Jesus plays, Pastore plays, and Perotti starts because uh, they'll all be leaving us. Uh, for the old boys, as they've been rather, you know, that's not overly... Oh, whatever it is what it is. Uh, it's a team made up of players that are retiring at the end of the season and players who have already retired, so it's kind of like a charity game, which is quite nice, actually. I really quite like that. Who have they got? Schmeichel in goal. Is he retiring? That'd be bad. Uh, Emperanu, uh, Martinovic, Klishi, Zabaleta, Kandreva, Parolo, Jauzinho, Samidov, Montalivo, and Sergio Garcia. Uh, who have they got on the bench? That's a matter of interest. Mandanda, Dubravka. Dubravka, you better not be retiring, boy. Skirtle, Ilton, Asari, Pascal, Miguel Veloso. Ah, always my go-to if I ever needed a defensive midfielder and football manager. Denisov, Galashikov. Robinho, who should be in prison, but all right, allegedly. Robin Van Persie and Rodrigo Palacio. He's finally going to retire before he retires that stupid haircut. Perotti. Lovely ball through for Russo. Has he got the pace he has? He hasn't got this, has he? He's still going. Russo, brilliant play, and Russo has scored. Well, there you go, Christian Russo. I'll tell you what, if we do go to Ajax, would it be worth bringing him with us? Now, there is a question. But either way, for the time being, he has scored in this testimonial game. It doesn't mean a whole heap, but it's just nice to get him on the score sheet. Really good strength. He's shown a really good determination there. Schmeichel, no idea where he's going. Mkhitaryan. Russo, nice little flick by Russo. Ball over the top, looking for Perotti to take it on the stunned of points. And he's put it just over the top of the crossbar. Lovely ball through by Russo. Perotti's in. Schmeichel makes the save. It's come to Mkhitaryan. And Schmeichel gets back to cover at his near post. It's Garcia. Sergio Garcia! That's a terrific finish. And Sergio Garcia, right on the stroke of halftime, has equalised for the old boys. The old, the old boys, as they would say in my hometown. Samedov. To Sergio Garcia, he's hit the post and it's hit Morante. And we've kept it, we've prevented the corner. But Sergio Garcia, bloody hell, maybe we should sign. <laughs> Even though he's retiring. Mikatarian And Pastore strikes a goal and he's hit the post. Mikatarian, it's still there. In towards Russo, big save. Pastore can't follow it up. As we approach the end of this testimonial, it's not been the most exciting or edge of your seat game. But it's a bit of a laugh. It's just to pay tribute to those who are hanging up the boots at the end of the game, at the end of the season. And there it is. There's Robin Van Persie, a man who's already retired. He knows what it feels like. And there we go. Some of the legends of this generation hanging up the boots for the very last time. So there we go, that will do it for this bumper episode of the Master League save with AS Roma, but is it for the last time with AS Roma? Because of course the most important thing that you guys can do, apart from hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit the bell icon so you're notified of when we make new videos, is to vote in the poll for uh, where we should go. Should we stay at Roma? and try and once again wrestle the Scudetto away from Juventus and since we're in the Champions League this season stick around and see how far we can go in that or do we accept the offer of Ajax go to the Eredivisie in a potentially well theoretically a weaker league for a chance, an even greater chance of winning the league title plus we will go into Europe as the European champions but while you're doing that uh, I will it is for me to say thank you so much for watching uh, thank you so much for watching this episode. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. 
and we will see you next season but will it be in Rome or will it be in Amsterdam that's entirely up to you but until then we will see you as always in the next one. Bye.